It has not been going very well. That was a giant waste of money. I don't think we would make this flight. And my COVID test had just expired. So. What is up everyone? Welcome to my kind of sure. And today I am preparing the long journey back to Shanghai. No, not driving to China. Huh? But I am driving to the Seattle airport, which is about a five hour drive from where I'm at now in Northern Idaho. Been out here for a few weeks trying to deal with some of my brother's estate stuff and it has not been going very well. Stuff here just moves really, really slow. It's unfortunate. I was hoping to get it all done before I went back. But the reality is we came here pretty last minute and my wife is only on a tourist visa, which only allows her to stay six months. Get out of here. Obviously, Xiaomai and I could stay, but we don't want to split up our family. So, you know, we left in such a hurry that we didn't get to say goodbye to most people. And we weren't able to really get our apartment in a condition to rent it. Six months ago, before my brother passed away, we were planning to be leaving China. However, life comes at you fast. Things change very quickly. The reality is, a lot of things that happen in your life are out of your control. There's nothing you can do about it. This past couple of months have been super stressful dealing with all this estate stuff. I've done as much as I can do right now. So I am looking forward to a break from that and you know, just getting back to Shanghai. Not gonna lie, I'm also missing the food quite a bit. So yeah, I am excited to just you know leave this behind for now, put it on hold and come back and enjoy Shanghai now that most of the COVID-19 restrictions have been lifted. We I mean, left it was still pretty strict, so I'm uh, very curious to get back and see what it's like now. Is it gonna be like the Shanghai that I used to know? The one that I really enjoyed? Well, we're gonna find out because we just paid a ton of money for tickets back. They were about $1,200 each what? one way. You know, I could have paid 700 bucks, 800 bucks for a ticket, but you got three stops, you know, you gotta fly to Singapore, and then you gotta fly to Korea, and then to Manila, and then to Shanghai, and it's like 47 hours total, and it's like not gonna do that. Especially not with a four year old with limitless energy. We've got our COVID tests, all negative. It's kinda weird taking one because I haven't taken one in five and a half months. I haven't worn a mask in five and a half months. I still don't really know anybody that's gotten COVID in the last five months since we got here. All right, I'm almost home, gotta finish packing and hit the road. I'm just about to head out, but I just wanna show you guys where I'm staying, it's my buddies. River cabin, it's pretty sweet. He's been letting us stay here for a few weeks and it's actually been really nice, really peaceful. Just hear all the, the geese and the birds and everything. There's deer, there's moose apparently. I haven't seen one yet. Big shout out to Dr. Nate for letting me crash his place for a while while we're in town. So we're about three and a half hours in. How was that car ride? It's cold here, isn't it? In the mountains? You excited to go back to Shanghai? Yeah. Are you gonna learn Chinese again? Yeah. Did you forget all your Chinese? Yeah. I swear he forgot all his Chinese. Oh, no. All right, let's keep going. So right now we're in the carpool lane because we have more than two people in our car. We can go in this lane, which means all of these other cars over here are just driving alone. We drive right past them. We don't have to deal with all the traffic. Feels pretty good. Oh, we finally made it to the airport. Last time I was here, Doing this a couple years ago, it was coming back to China right in the middle of COVID. It was probably one of the most stressful times of my life. We had to get a COVID test like 24 hours before the flight, and you had to get a very specific kind of test at that time. At the end of 2020, there just wasn't a ton of availability. Super expensive. Now they're everywhere, of course, so it's a lot easier, but upload all this information, try to get a green code from the consulate. I didn't get mine and uh, I was just, I don't think I hardly slept that night waiting for that green code to come. Eventually it finally did a few hours before the flight. Now we just need one COVID test, 48 hours before the flight and none of the other stuff. So it's, it should be pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Plus no two week quarantine, no quarantine at all. I vowed to never do that again. All right, so we finally got checked in. Man, that took way longer than I thought. We got to the airport three hours early. That took about an hour and a half, hour 45 minutes. We do have enough time, but man, it's, <laughs> it's gonna get close. Xiao Mai is like, he just could not make it. <laughs> the good news is there was no one at security. I mean, look at the place is just completely dead. Probably the longest I've ever waited in line to check into a flight, but the fastest security I've ever been through. So traveling is always stressful. You just don't know what can go wrong. The ironic thing is they didn't even check our COVID tests. What? So, I mean, we're negative, but like, that was a giant waste of money. There we are, Taipei, Eva Air, 1.30 a.m. S16 on time. We gotta hop on a train though. This flight starts boarding in like 10 minutes. So we're literally just gonna barely make it. And honestly, if this was during the daytime and we had to go through security then when there are a lot of people here, I don't think we would make this flight. I guess you can just never be too early. Little man is out. Dollar. 
Well, it turns out we do have to wear masks on the flight. I haven't worn one of these in a while. I'm white. I'm gonna try to get some sleep here. See you in Taipei. Eventually. We made it to Taipei. How was the flight? Good, man. <laughs> We did pretty good, I have to say. It's about 5 a.m. We got about a four hour layover. If it was like 7 p.m., I might try to sneak out and go to like night markets and eat my face off. But someday I'm gonna take you back here to Taiwan. I've been here before, it's a really cool place. Amazing food, amazing people, beautiful nature. Bye, Taiwan. Yeah, we'll be back again someday. That's one thing I noticed about the Taiwan airport here in Taipei is like every gate has like a pretty cool theme. Like, this is actually a, a gate to go on the airplane. It's like a rainforest theme. Let's see what else they have here, because I got three and a half hours to kill. Okay, here we go. <laughs> oh, two bounces. Teach you a word. Anticlimactic. Sorry. <laughs> I haven't seen one of these in 10 years. It's like an antique. Terminal 2 is apparently the underwater terminal. Who's this guy? <laughs> so oh, finally, we found it. The kids play area, slides, playground, everything. Now we can just chill here for a little bit, let Shamai burn off some energy. Heading onto the plane to Shanghai, the last little leg, and we'll see what it's like when we get there. I'm just having flashbacks of last time going to all the different stations and tests and lines. Did they give you a free gift? Two hours later. We made it, we're in Shanghai. I'm expecting a much faster and smoother process. Let's check it out. And I think we just have to provide like a haiguanma, like some kind of customs form. No more health codes or travel codes, none of that stuff. At this point still no one has checked our COVID-19 test results. No one's even asked for it, let alone checked it. So maybe it's a sign that they're gonna get rid of it for all countries soon, I don't know. Let's go, man, let's go home. All right, we made it through customs. Not a lot of people there, but man, that was just so slow. And they said I didn't have to wear a mask, so if we didn't eat. All right, gotta go find my wife and our luggage. Get out of here. All right, finally home here. Show my fell asleep, so I just put him back in bed real quick. Sorry, I gotta catch my breath hauling the luggage up the stairs. But overall, a much, much smoother journey than the one two years ago during COVID. My apartment is still in one piece. Everything still looks the same, but the question I have is, is Shanghai the same again? Good morning, everyone. I'm just uh, walking around Jing'an. Probably went to bed at about nine o'clock last night. I, uh, I was so tired. I think I woke up at 4.30, you know, trying to get over jet lag and whatnot. Um, so I figured I'd just go for a nice long walk this morning and see what's changed, what's new. One thing that's changed, which I knew before I got here, is that a lot of my friends have gone, uh, even in the past few months since I was in the US, a couple of my best friends have left. So that part kind of sucks. I don't know when I'm going to get to see them again. And you know, it's not just the international friends in the city. It's also some Chinese friends have left as well. That's just a big bummer. It feels like a good half of my friends have gone. And you know, some things never do change. We got all the eyes out in the park doing Taiji. So that's nice to see. In fact, right over there was a COVID testing station that I always used to go to because the lines were always shorter. And that is completely gone which is a nice sign. I have yet to see one COVID testing station or one Dabai, which is really nice. <laughs> Masking seems to be very optional at this point. No one's getting on you like, wear a mask, put your mask on. You know, if you forgot to put it on by mistake or something. And this little park entrance, I remember one time, I was taking Xiao Mai for a walk here, and they had a thing, you had to scan your, your health code, and my COVID test had just expired, so it turned red. And it goes me 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 like really loud and everybody's looking at me like oh my god he didn't have a covid test so that was a little awkward but that machine is all gone so good things good to see people out here doing tai chi again overall things look uh, like they're in much better shape than they were will it ever get 100 percent back to normal i have no idea but i'll be here for a couple months i should have a lot more time to make content make videos for you guys so you can expect a lot more videos coming from me in the very near future, which I'm excited about. I think I'm gonna go get some shengjian. I've been dying for some of that stuff. Anyway, I'm gonna continue on my walk and hope to see you guys all real soon. And as always, stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy. Watch your Michael Lauscher. Shatsu. Zaijian.